All right, everyone, we will begin momentarily. We still have some people entering through the parking lot, so we will begin in just a few minutes. Thank you for being patient with us.
All right. Good evening. Good to see everybody that's come out. I appreciate you guys. We are super excited for our play tonight. It's called The Conversation. We are super excited. We've worked really hard on this play uh, for probably the last, say, at least two months or so. Um, but we're, we're super excited. This is an original. It was written by someone here in our church, uh, Miss Alicia Blankenship. So we are super, super proud of this. Um, we hope that you um, get something out of this. Um, don't pay attention to the acting um, or the way we do things, but just pay attention to the words, most importantly, and um, the message behind it. The conversation is really important because it talks all about uh, the free gift of salvation. Um, and so my encouragement, my, my, uh, my hope for you tonight, that if you are lost and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, that today would be the day that you uh, accept him. Most importantly, the uh, most important thing that I, I want to make known is the altar tonight. Even though we're going to be up here on the stage and uh, walking around and everything, the altar is always open. Okay, You're not going to get in our way. You're not going to get in anybody's way. Um, we'll move around you, whatever we need to do, but the altar is always open. Okay, If you have a need, um, if you have a burden, but most importantly, if you're lost, the altar is here for you tonight. Okay, Amen. Thank you guys so much for being here. I apologize for the delay. Just want to make sure everybody got in uh, if they needed to get in. So, again, thank you for being here. We're excited, and we, we hope that you enjoy the message. So often we question our worth, our purpose, and what we truly believe. With it being Easter, our most important stance is that Jesus arose on that third appointed day. So much happened during the time before Jesus' crucifixion up until he arose. We must always remember, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. so thankful you all came with me to Youth Highly this weekend. You know, I just got such a blessing of just having you two with me. You know, it was really nice to be with people our age, just having a good time. I don't get why you all liked it so much. All they talked about was God, and there was nothing there to make it a great time, if you know what I mean. I mean, I don't get how God isn't even real. You've never seen him. No one's ever seen him. Why would you say that? You know how I feel about God. Surely you believe in a little bit after the youth rally. Did you not feel any sort of stirring in your chest? No, I didn't feel any kind of stirring. All I felt was the vibration of the loud music playing throughout the whole place. I don't see how you can believe in something that isn't even real. You've never seen him. No one has ever seen him. You know, she's got a point. We've never seen God. You are both. She's not understanding. All We see God all around us in everything we do. When we woke up this morning, that was God. When we made it safely home for the youth rally, that was God. Did you really Can not... Can we please just move on from this conversation? I'm tired of talking about it. You know, I wouldn't mind hearing a little bit more about Jesus and why Haley is so crazy about him. Great. Let me get my Bible. I won't be able to tell you everything tonight, but we could certainly talk about my favorite things he has done. Would you like to join us or are you going on to bed? I guess I'll entertain the ideas 
you have about your imaginary friend for a little while? First of all, Jesus was a miracle from the very beginning. God had amazing plans for him from the very beginning, and every little detail was perfectly planned by God himself. I should believe that a woman just randomly ended up pregnant and that she traveled that far just to deliver him in a barn with a bunch of animals around and that a star got at others to him. Just wait, there's more. Jesus was outstanding even as a child. He started doing God's work at the young age of 12. You mean he started preaching like the pastor does? Well, he wasn't preaching at that time, but he was attending services and learning all that he could. He was certainly about God's business from the very beginning. You have got to be kidding me right now. This is getting ridiculous. 
You're trying to get me to believe that a child cared about going to the temples and learning about God. I mean, even I know how little kids are. They could almost care less about anything. Now you want me to believe that he wanted to learn about God and church? Can you please just stop being so rude and just listen? As Jesus is God older, he would begin to perform different miracles and heal people. Here we go again with his magic powers. Have you not heard anything yet? Just wait, there's more. One of the miracles he performed was feeding 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish that was provided by a young boy. 5,000? Are you sure you don't mean five? No, it was 5,000. He took the bread and the fish and blessed it and then divided it among all the people. But you know what? There's more. More? Yes, after feeding the 5,000, there were still 12 baskets of food left over for the young boy to take back home. That's absolutely impossible. I am amazed at what you are telling me. I cannot imagine being there and witnessing that. Did he perform any other miracles? One of my most favorite stories of all is when he brought back to life his good friend, Lazarus. The news came to Jesus, please come fast. Lazarus is sick, and without your help, he will not last. Mary and Martha watched their brother die. They waited for Jesus. church off and on and heard these stories but never really understood them. Actually, I didn't take the time to listen. And do you know what the greatest thing you ever done was? Here we go again. Why do you always have to be so negative? The most important thing Jesus ever done was die on a cross for our sins. He suffered so much pain and agony just for our sins. He was beaten to the point that he was unrecognizable. He had a crown of thorns placed on his head. 
You mean this man who doesn't even know me took all of that just for me? Yes, he did. But just wait, there's more. More? Yes. He was not only beaten, had a crown of thorns placed on his head. He hung up on a cross just for us. They took three nails, one for each hand, one for his feet. They drove those nails through his hands and feet and he hung there. For us, for me, for you, for everyone. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's impossible. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this. That's not the end of it, though. Not only did he die there, they took him down from the cross and he was placed in a tomb. There was a stone placed in front of the tomb as well as a guard from keeping anyone from entering. In the beginning, God created died for my sins, just so I could be set free from that terrible place. Yes, he did. Now you know what's so crazy about telling people about God and Jesus too. 
there's more. Yes, not only did he die there for our sins, but he rose on the third day. But he's coming back one day to take his children home. Those who have trusted him, accept him as their Savior, will have the beautiful place waiting for them in heaven. And we'll get to be with Jesus for eternity. What do I need to do to fully accept Jesus into my life? You know, I'm not sure how you did it, but there's just something about all of this that has my heart pounding out of my chest. And I know that if I die right now where I'm going, I need to do whatever it takes to accept him. It's so simple. You just have to pray and confess. It tells us in the book of Romans in chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess in thine mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath risen him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Would you guys like to pray? Yeah. 
All right. Can y'all hear me? Yeah? Okay. I don't think I've ever got ready so quick in my life. Oh my gosh. Ask my mom. Usually I'd take at least 45 minutes in the bathroom, but I had to get out here real quick. Um, I may or may not have one sock on, so (laughs) it's all good. It's all good. Um, Another round of applause. Awesome job. You all did absolutely amazing. absolutely amazing. I'm going to try to fix my earpiece here. Again, thank you to everybody that, that came out. I'm going to keep this, keep this brief because um, I want to leave time for an altar call, but um, I've got some scripture because I, I feel like any time that you, you gather in the house of God, you need to share the word of God. I feel like that's important. Um, so I'm going to just share just a few things that I, I feel like God has, has laid on my heart tonight, um, and then we'll, we'll open the altar up. Um, but at any time during this or um, however God leads us, um, the altar is open. It's always open for business. So if you have a burden, if you have anything that you need to come and do work with God, I, I encourage you to come. Um, I'm going to be reading out of John chapter uh, 20, just real quick. Again, I'm not going to keep you too long. John chapter 20 says this, starting in verse number 11. The top of my, my Bible here, the, the topic that it has for, for these verses is an empty tomb. I'm so glad that the tomb is empty today. Amen. Verse 11 reads this. It says, But Mary stood without a sepulcher, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And see of two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they had laid him. When she said, thus said, she turneth herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. I want you to pay attention to that. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? 
She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabbani, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Verse 18 concludes with, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Very familiar scripture here. And uh, I can't help but relate to Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene did not realize who she was looking at. Amen? It says right there in verse number 14, it says, When she had hath thus said, said this, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was him, that it was Jesus. They were expecting a dead man. They were not expecting a resurrection. Amen? Amen. Yes. In verse 15, it tells us, Jesus asked, Why are you crying, Mary? He's basically saying, Do you not know that it's me? It was not until Jesus actually said her name in verse number 16 that she recognized him as Lord and Master. How often do we come to the place, amen, where we are so broken that we don't even recognize the voice of God? We do not even recognize that Jesus is right there in front of us. Amen. So often we, we forget the simple things of the Bible. What do I mean by the simple things? That he will never leave nor forsake us. Amen. That he is continuously and abundantly present in our lives. Amen. Every single day. Which includes the mountaintop and the lowliest of valleys. I love when God takes me down memory lane. You ever been there? Love when God takes me down memory lane. He will often call out my name, especially when I'm just going through a hard time. He'll say, Landon, Landon, focus on me, right? And he'll, he'll take me down memory lane. Typically, it's the day that I accepted him as my Savior. I'm coming up on my eighth spiritual birthday. I accepted Christ back in November of uh, 2015. And he takes me there so often. Takes me back to Vasper Missionary Baptist Church, small little church down in Caraville. He'll take me to the altar. Amen. He takes me back to the message that was preached that day. He takes me back to the feeling that I felt after I got up off that altar. He takes me back to the day that I accepted him. Amen. He takes me back to my first love. Just him and I. Just him and I. So tonight with this, this play and uh, this theatrical production that we, we've done here, I want you to take away the freeness, the free gift, amen, of salvation. It's free. He expects nothing in return. Nothing. Amen? Amen? And all it takes is for you to step out. For you to step out. So often, as I was saying, he, he takes me back to, to memory lane. He takes me back to when I was younger, when I accepted him, when I was afraid, knowing that Landon Ford was going to a devil's hell. He takes me back to that day. Amen? He takes me back to when I knew that if I didn't accept him, that's where I was going. His voice was so audible and so tangible. It was speaking so clearly to my heart that day. And all it took on my part, on my end, was to step out. Step out. If you do that, if you have the courage within yourself to just step out, he'll grab you by the hand 
and lead you the rest of the way. Mm. That's the God we serve. Amen. We complicate salvation. We do. We're human, right? We complicate salvation. We make it difficult. We worry about what others will think. We worry about, am I going to say the right thing? Save folks, we know anytime we do something for God, right? We want it to be perfect, right? Because it's for our God. It's for our Heavenly Father. Amen? But still, we get nervous. We worry about what people are going to say and think. I've been there. Exhibit 101, right here. Amen? Exhibit 101. So tonight, let's start at the foundation. Amen? So often, from the pulpit, you hear messages of salvation. It's great. But I, I feel like there, there needs to be an explanation to what salvation is. The dictionary defines salvation. I read this earlier today and it just ran all over me. Listen to this. Defines salvation as preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. Listen to this. Through his sacrifice, through his blood, we are preserved from harm, from ruin, from loss. Through his sacrifice, through his blood, we are delivered from harm, ruin, or loss. Mm. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. John 3.16, we know it like the back of our hands. Amen? John 3.16 says this right here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only one, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. 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 That doesn't make you want to shout. I don't know what will. Amen. Amen. John 3.16 is arguably the most well-known verse in the entire Bible. It is also, in my opinion, the greatest love story ever, yes. ever, ever, ever told. Amen. Ever told. It does not say, and I want you to notice this in John 3.16. It does not say, for the world so love God. No, 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 no. Because if it was anything up to us, we would have failed a long time ago. A long time ago. If it was left to us and our ability and our gifts and our talents, church, we wouldn't make it. Just being honest with you, we wouldn't make it. Landon Ford would not make it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But thanks be to God. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What does that tell me? Well, it says it's including everyone and excluding no one. Amen? Without the selfless sacrifice of Jesus, we would all be in a devil's hell. Amen. Every single one of us. You say, Landon, I don't like that. That's scary. Truth hurts sometimes. It does. It is where we belong. It's where we should be. Hate to say that, but it's true. Amen. But thanks be to God that if you are washed by the precious sweet blood of Jesus Christ, you never have to see it. Amen. Never have to see it. Thank God. We've got a few verses here, and I want you to pay attention to this, okay? This is in Romans. I want you to pay attention to this. If you feel like your heart is beating out of your chest tonight, I've been there. I've been there. I think many of us in this room have been there. Who needs salvation? Romans chapter 3. Verses 10 through 12 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And then verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So who needs salvation? I do. 
We all do. Amen? Why do we need salvation? Well, the Bible tells us that too. Chapter 6, verse 23 of Romans says this, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. How does God provide salvation, you may ask? Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says this, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. Who can receive salvation? Well, I just read the best verse that probably tells it so plainly. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, including everyone and excluding no one. Amen. So you may ask, well, Landon, how, how do I receive salvation? Well, the Bible tells us that too. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10 says this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him up from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. And then lastly, what are the results after salvation? If you thought getting saved was the best part, listen to this. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So he's the ultimate peace giver, right? He's the greatest friend that you'll ever need, right? He's all of these things for you. For me. And all you have to do is reach out and take his hand. Listen to this, this last little bit here that I want to I share with you. And then I'm going to ask the, the youth to come up and um, do a verse of invitation to the altar. Okay? The God who is omnipresent, meaning he's not defined by time, who is literally everything, including outside the constraints of time, he is, was, and ever will be, chooses freely to make his home inside of you. So let me ask you this. Do some self-reflection right here. Have you ever came to the point where you just feel so empty? You feel empty inside. Have you allowed the devil too many victories? I have. I have. Are you at the point where you're just, you're just wanting to lay down, throw in the towel, and just be done? Been there. Been there. Tonight, I, I encourage you, I plead with you, I beg with you, that if your heart is beating out of your chest, I'd run. I'd run to the altar. I would. I'd get here as quick as I could. Amen. Amen. All it takes is one step. One step. I can't drag you to the altar. The person next to you can't drag you to the altar. It has to be you. It has to be you. I promise you that if you just take that step out, there will be an entire army of people following right behind you. I promise you. No one's going to look at you differently. No one's going to think that you're funny. I promise you. Just one step, that's all it takes. So again, it's your heart beating out of your chest. You feel like something's stirring inside of you right now. If there is, I encourage you to come. I'd ask the youth to come up if you would. Go ahead and get your your song ready. I'll say this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 tells us that today is the day of salvation. If God is calling you, in this moment, if you feel that stirring within your heart, I'd encourage you to come. Don't give Satan the victory. I wouldn't. Because you are only promised one chance. And I say that not to scare you. I say that because I love you. I'm a friend. Amen. I say that not to scare you. You are not promised another chance after this. As they sing, I would encourage you to come to the altar. Amen. Maybe you need to come and rededicate. 
That's okay too. Amen. Maybe you have a burden that you want to lay down here at the altar. There is no better place and no better time to do it than right here. Amen. I want to be transparent with you all. Okay? God's here tonight and he's waiting with open arms as they sing. Seems like all I can see was the struggle haunted by ghosts that lived in my past bound up in shackles of all my failures wondering how long is this gonna last then you look at this prisoner and say to me son stop fighting a fight Amen. listen it's to this already been won. listen i am redeemed thank god yeah you set me free are you in bondage so tonight it's a great opportunity to be set free. Wipe away every stain. Yeah. Now I'm not who I used to be. Amen. I am redeemed. All my Amen. life I have been called unworthy. Named by the voice of my shame and regret. God for it. Thank God for it. Appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Well, this concludes our, our service tonight, but just want to say thank you so much for, for coming out. We, we appreciate all of our visitors, um, as well as our, our church members that have come out to, to see our play tonight. Uh, the altar will continue to be open, so if you, you have a need or anything at all, after we dismiss here in a second, feel free to come up, okay? If God is continuing to wrestle with your heart, whether you need to be saved, rededicate, or just have a burden, I encourage you to come to the altar before you leave this church tonight. I'd be too scared not to. Amen? I'd be too scared not to. Amen. Anybody have anything to say before we dismiss? Anything at all for the glory of God? Amen. Amen. Anything else tonight? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Yeah, listen to this. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm.
Mm. Amen. 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 I agree. I agree. Just because we're, we're dismissing, we're getting to a close, doesn't mean that we can't continue on. So if you have anything, anything to say or do, I'd do it. I'd be obedient. Anything else tonight? Yes. Yes, remember Sister Joyce. Let's remember that request. Amen. Anything else tonight? Anything at all? Not trying to prolong it. Just giving you one more opportunity. Amen. Now what do you say? I spoke of your honor. Amen. I have no deep thing. Amen. But that's when mercy walked in. Thank God. Mercy walked in. Amen. 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 Thank God for that. Thank God. I like the part in that song where it says, I have no defense. I didn't, church. But Jesus said, come anyways. Thank God. Amen. Anything else tonight? Yeah, thank God for that. Amen. 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 Anything else tonight? Yeah. Amen. 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 Anything else tonight? Anything at all? <laughs> me too <laughs> me too thank God for that amen well if all hearts and minds are clear again I'd like to say thank you for coming anything else yeah 
I don't want to. <laughs> Somebody wants to start it. <laughs> you don't want me starting it. <laughs> See? Listen to this. Yeah, thank God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God. Praise 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 God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thankful for that. Amen. Thankful for that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thankful for that. Anything else? Anything at all? All right. Well, again, thank you for coming. We appreciate everyone that's come out tonight. Hope that you will take this, apply it to your lives, and share it with the world. Amen. Amen. All right. Brother Bobby, do you care to dismiss us in a word of prayer tonight? Heavenly Father, God, as we bow before the throne of grace, God, we want to be so very thankful for what we're going to hear this night. God, for each and every one that took a part. God, for your presence and for your guidance. Lord, we're thankful for those who were obedient that came to the altar. But God, we pray if those that you are speaking with, those that you are dealing with, those who you're convicting, have not yet surrendered. God, we pray before they leave this building tonight, Lord, that they would surrender their hearts to you. Just come to the altar and get it right and leave with the peace in their heart. We thank you for each and everybody that came out this night that supported for our youth group. God, we thank you for the leaders and the teachers. God, we thank you for the parents and the grandparents, but most of all, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, for your presence, for the price that you paid on Calvary. God, that you did on that third and appointed day walk out of that grave. Amen. Thank God. So we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. And God, we ask that we would all have travel mercies as we go to our home. And like Christ Jesus' precious holy name, we do pray. And amen. 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 amen.